Welcome back to the Artie Lang Show. Thanks to French Quarters Guest Apartments for being our New York City hotel. Let them be your headquarters in New York City. Go to FrenchQuartersNY.com to book your next day. FrenchQuartersNY.com to book your next day. Our next guest, uh, guest gives us an all-star panel here. Uh, he knows about baseball. He knows about football. He knows about a lot of things. The great Casey Stern. What's up, Case? What's up, boys? How we doing? Hi. So, uh, are you sick? Oh, yeah. What happened? I don't know. I was I was fine. I talked to Filato on Saturday, and all of a sudden I came down with a flu. Really? Yeah. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. From, ta- from talking to Dan? Yeah, I think it's possible. But, yeah, it's, oh, uh, I'm, you know, luckily it's uh, luckily it's, it's radio, so I'll, I'll survive. But, uh, yeah, we're, we're pumped up on codeine. We're ready to go. Do you have a, a cough really? and everything? Yeah, it's one of these, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those, like, you know, annoying, cold, yet, like, flu, achy, just pain in the ass kind of deal. So just, mm. uh, you know, shake it off a couple of days, and we'll uh, get back in there. But, uh, yeah, hanging in there. Do you have a baby there. yet? No, not yet. Two weeks away, man. Due yeah, doesn't it seem weeks, like so his wife fun. has been pregnant for... Yeah, nine months. It's crazy. How that <laughs> <works>. <laughs> yeah. It's been a full nine months. Uh yeah. So what are we thinking about baseball here? You think I tell you what, I like that the Yankees. Every time they ask one of the Yankees in an interview about A Rod, like CC Sabathia just goes, "Who?" Like the Yankees are all getting a little honest about A Rod. It seems like the dam is breaking, where they're all just going to call him a jerk off soon. What are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, I, it, it, until officially they know that they're rid of him, I don't know if they're going to go that far. But I think you know clearly. CC Sabathia in the Daily News the other day was pretty. Uh, well, look, I, I think I think we all know that pretty much everybody in baseball feels that way outside of Francisco Cervelli and like three other guys that were on the on the on the, on the, uh, the report with that clinic in Miami. So you right. know, look, uh, I think with the A Rod scenario, you saw how Joe Girardi handled it last year, and we talked about that. You know, Joe obviously is a guy who I think morally pretty much disagrees with everything that A-Rod has been and has done, but he went out and fought for the guy when he was part of the team. Now that A-Rod's gone, he's gone. The good news is he went away. Uh, you know, the fight is over. The fight now is between him and his lawyers, and, and it's an afterthought. So, you know, at least we're sitting here and we're not in, into the season having to deal with Alex Rodriguez, which I think a lot of us were worried about, even with the suspension, worried about him being in the news. But he's gone, at least for now. Yeah, A-Rod now, the latest thing with him, I mean, what a scumbag. I mean, at least on paper. You never know. Maybe he's not. But, but uh, every indication, he doesn't want to pay his lawyers now. No. Is that the case? Yeah, because he didn't win. You know, he, he apparently didn't realize that actually you have to pay Joe Tagapina either way. Yeah. And that's not how it works. I mean, he had hired, let's not forget, he had three lawyers. He had a PR firm behind him. I mean, this guy had put millions and millions of dollars into his legal battle. But, you know, the dumb thing that he did was listening to people who were just trying to, you know, basically get him to spend his money on their legal team because he never had a chance. There was, there was you know, one smokescreen after another, but there was never any legitimate reason why Alex Rodriguez was ever going to be able to get away scot-free. So, you know, for him to think that that was the case, I mean, you know, I don't know about scumbag, but as far as being dumb, I think we can classify that if he thinks that he was going to get away with it. You think about what he did. He hired a PR firm to try to make him likable. They said, okay, we're going to try to make you likable, which is going to help your case. You know, stuff like making those appearances on Francesca's show, like go in there and try to see, and that backfired on him. He just seemed like more of a jerk, more of an... uh, unrelatable boob and uh you're paying a pr firm a lot of money and that's all part of the thing and when you you know it's a good point when you look back at it he tried to he tried to create this whole situation and it just didn't work and now he doesn't want to pay anybody you know the irony is it's like you know if somebody would have talked to a-rod the way you talk to a kid when he's eight and say okay son this is why when you lie and you get into trouble instead of forging the signature to the teacher come you know, take your lumps, you know, get your grounding, and then it's over. If he would have gone and actually admitted what he'd done and apologized and moved on, he would have been back on the field already. Hey, look, it's tough to talk to an 8-year-old who's banging Cameron Diaz. Well, hey. <laughs> yeah. right, now, you're right. It's, it's, uh, well, anyway, I, but the Yankees seem relieved is my point. I don't, what do you think of the Yanks this year? I think the Jeter thing, yeah, I'm, let me say this, you know, the pressure they're putting on Jeter to have good games. The Daily News, I think maybe end the post, are both given his daily stats every day and going back this day in Jeter history and everything. Let the guy play. It's April. I mean, let's let's get into this a little more. And uh, you know, the Astros got to give him a cowboy hat. What do the Astros mean to him? Zero. Nothing. Yeah, zero. Exactly. Uh, well, does, but, isn't it creepy what's going on with him? Well, look. Uh, you know, I think you know the level that he is. 
if you look at the shortstops in the game of baseball, no offense to Honus Wagner, who none of us ever saw, you know, Cal Ripken Jr. had the Iron Man streak, but he wasn't the player Jeter is. Ozzy Smith, the defender, but not the overall player Jeter is. And A-Rod, for a six, seven-year period of time at that position, was a better player, but nobody thinks any of it's legitimate. So you can make a case he's the best shortstop any of us have ever seen. And if that's the case, you deserve that. I mean, my hope is, even though we've seen this now with Mariana Rivera and Derek Jeter, you know, you didn't see it for Todd Helton. Nobody's doing it for Paul Canerco. You know, I think you're really just having to, you know, get into the idea of we're, we're talking about legends. You know, Chipper Jones, the first ballot Hall of Famer. Mariana Rivera, first ballot Hall of Famer. Jeter is one of the best players, forget about Yankees, that's ever lived. So I actually don't think in 2014 the magnifying glass on Jeter is, is weird or anything that I wouldn't expect. I would say this, you know, I expect him to have a pretty good year if he can stay on the field. I think they need to DH him enough and be careful. But if they can keep him on the field, Derek Jeter is one of these guys who walks, you know, crawls out of bed at, at 55. He can go have a good A.B. So if they can get him up to the plate enough times, I wouldn't be shocked if he hit 300 this season. I don't think the power is going to be there. I think they need to rest him. But I think he could be a, a player. To me, I'm more worried much more about Teixeira even before this injury than I was about Jeter. I think Jeter will be okay if he's on the field. So with Jeter, uh, be, you know, last year he played in 17 games. Watching him this season, does he look physically fit, recovered from his injuries of, of the last uh, few years? He didn't look good in spring training. But, you know, I think part of that was kind of him, John, really reserving himself. I don't think he was, you know, going all out. I think he's protecting his body for the season. He's been okay. Got on base a couple of times today. Looks fine to me. I mean, look, the Yankees have hit the ball pretty well, considering what's gone on with the injuries already with this team. Ellsbury had eight hits in the Jays series. He was very good again today. Salarte is yeah. kind of a, a Melky Cabrera type of story. Guy reminds me of him in the way he hits. Looks like him on the left side of the plate. And, you know, the Yankees have always had these, you know, Aaron small on the mound, Melky back, way back when. You can go back to the, you know, the, the Chad Curtises, uh, Shane Spencer, who's the king of this kind of stuff. They always have guys kind of come out of nowhere. They're going to need Solarte for a little bit because the one thing I can tell you, the Yankees in July will act like they did this offseason. They will be the most active team to try and add and do what mm -hmm. they can because even though they don't have prospects, they can take on bad rental contracts and try and get better. But they have to, with Kelly Johnson and Solarte, do enough until they get to July, and that's going to be remains to be seen. Because is, they, they have their infield looks like it should be for the San Diego Padres outside of Jeter, not for the New York Yankees. So Salarte, who's nine for twenty this season, Four, a back, great story. Yeah. yeah, a great story. Is he that good, or is this a guy who's no. just playing out of his mind well, right I'd now? Say, I, I just think he's having one of the look. I mean, thoroughly, you know, yeah. he's having a great stretch. I think it's more a great story. Can it last for the whole season at 450? No. Can he be what Melky Cabrera was? Not really a highly touted prospect who turned into a guy that all of a sudden was a relevant player for the Yankees even before he was doing steroids? Maybe. The, the thing I love about Solarte, guys, is when he his last day of spring training, he thought that he was done. Wasn't expected to make the team because they had Eduardo Nunez who ended up going to the Twins today. So Solarte went up to Jarek Jeter and said, I'm probably never going to see you again. Can you sign my lineup card? And he proceeded to have everybody on the team autograph his lineup card, thinking he'd never see them again the next day he made the team, and he's been a star ever since. Yeah. Well, anyway, I don't like the Yanks. God knows what's going to happen. Uh, I hope uh, Jeter has a fun last year, but it's just uh, it's crazy how complicated Even if the, the Jeter stuff, nowadays. though, like <sighs> – if it becomes a distraction, it's his own fault. I never I understood this this I garbage. Agree with you. Yeah, yeah. I never understood this garbage with tell announcing your retirement at the start of the season. I mean, it, it, you're just inviting all these distractions to come into place everywhere you go. And if Jeter was going to be done with his career, say it the day or a couple days before the last home stand yeah. for the Yankees. Allow your home team to to honor you and, and honoring you even yeah. you get honored by it being is. paid 200 plus uh, million dollars and paid. listen I agree. Enough. I agree with everything you're saying because yeah, think no about think about anybody who's ever met Derek Jeter would ever think he's doing this for attention yeah but listen but, but why but, do but, it but why that, do it then it but is self-indulgent here's, here's the point though Casey things, one the Yankees pushed him to do it just like they did Rivera because they want to soak the hell out of it uh -huh. that's one 
Two, Jeter didn't want to be asked the question every single day, are you going to retire, so he got it out of the way. Anybody who's ever, you know, Andy Pettit, when he was asked about Jeter's response to the Houston thing, his, his response was Derek called it torture. This is not a guy, look, uh, you know, we, we always blast athletes. I don't think I've ever covered or seen an athlete who cares less about attention, not from women, but from the media, than Derek <laughs> Jeter. He could care less what any of us think. Yeah, but you yeah, tell, well, I, uh, well, here's, here's. I agree with Chris in the sense, what's worse, a, a, a reporter maybe every other day, because it's not going to be every day, everyone, I mean, saying you're going to retire and you're giving a one-word answer, or your assistant coming to you and saying, look, the Astros are going to give you a cowboy hat. You have to think of something to say, and it's at least a couple of paragraphs, because blah, 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 blah. That's going to happen everywhere, from Houston to Milwaukee to, and, and you got to deal with coming back from an injury at your last year. I agree, it's too much to think about. It's crazy, you know? Yeah, I look, uh, this is Derek Jeter. Hi. I'm knocking on the phone. <laughs> this is Derek Jeter. You, you can distract him if you want. You can bring Godzilla on the field. He'll get three hits. I'm I just saying, there. though, he, he could tell the Yankees. Derek Jeter. So he could, he could have told the Yankees to bleep off if yeah. they wanted to do this whole really? thing. He could, of course he could have. No, no way. How? How could he do that? The, he could say, I'm undecided about my future. They paid him over his he career? Could say, you know how indebted he is to that? Well, he's yes, the one guy he could, who could, though. Man. He could say, I'm undecided about my future. He yeah. couldn't say, I'm yeah, retiring. He could have, yes, he could have completely lied and done that, and yes, he could have done that. That would be yeah. unjeter like though. Yes. Thank right. you. I like that he shaved his head because he really looks like Franklin from the from the uh, Peanuts thing, now. <laughs> like Charlie Brown. He looks exactly sort like of. Him. Yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, uh, Casey. What about uh, what's going to happen with Yasiel Puig? Is he going to uh, find himself out of a job at some point? You know, it, it's it's a question of whether or not they're going to really do what they've said. Ned Coletti told me when I talked to him in spring training that, you know, they had basically informed Puig that if, if things got out of hand and they had all four outfielders healthy, which they do now with Kemp Crawford and Ethier, mm -hmm. that he'd be spending time with Jock Peterson, who is the big stud outfielder that the Dodgers have down in AAA. So they have threatened it to him. They called him Santa when he came in out of shape. They weren't happy with the thing that happened where he's driving 100 with his mother in the backseat of his car. With that attention, I know and I've heard from a couple of players inside that clubhouse that, you know, clearly despite the meetings and all the things that Puig has tried to do, even had somebody tell me today that there was a discussion among players about how many times they've tried and just nothing seems to work and get through to them. So wow. clearly there are issues. You know, the thing with Puig is He's an extremely talented player. This is a top 20 talent already in terms of ability on the field, and that's at a raw level. He's still figuring it out. So how do you kind of, you know, take the conflict of clearly we're a better team if he's on the field, even with his mistakes and his antics. Do you hurt the team? How does it work? If all the guys are healthy and he continues to be a nincompoop, sliding into first like a ridiculous idiot, getting taken off of first base and picked off the way he did in the game after he showed up late, you know, the excuses, all the different nonsense they've dealt with. If it continues, I think they should send him down. But, look, it, it takes takes acorns to sit there. You're in Dodger land. You're spending Yankee money. You're out there, and your your World Series are bust. And clearly this guy's one of the best players in baseball as far as talent. It's mm -hmm. going to be very tough for them to do. But, yeah, I think they said they'd do it. I think they would. So he's still that good being as overweight as he came in? Well, look, he came in overweight, but at the same time, I mean, look, you know, talking about an overweight guy who looked like Bo Jackson gained six pounds. I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah. Over, the guy's built like a, you know, like a, a, a brick, you know what. Uh, yeah. To me, I think the overweight stuff is overblown. Let's not forget, Mike Trout was called, you know, he was the fat guy who gained 25 pounds before last season. I remember going out in our 30 and 30 tour, and we had to hit the Angels first because the big story in baseball was the weight gain of Mike Trout. Uh, go look at his numbers from last year. I don't think the weight really hurt him. It depends what kind of weight it is. Mm -hmm. Puig's still running as fast power moving as hard the, the issue with Puig is he's very comfortable this is a guy who has no humility whatsoever he's like a nine-year-old pouting in left field because he's not getting you know or a guy in a basketball court who's crying because he's not getting the ball it's very difficult to watch the way he acts but the play is is to me beyond question he's a great player Casey Stern our uh, our announcer Mike Boschetti claims to be a big big as big as it gets Mets fan oh no What's the under over on amount of the amount of current New York Mets Boschetti can name? What's your under over? Uh, because I've tried this with him, I think he's he starts with Gil Hodges. So no, current <laughs> yeah, current New York Mets. Uh, David Wright and maybe two more. 
Well, Maybe. you just gave him one, you jerk yeah. off. See, come on, he well, see, he always right. thought, Now he'll get zero. I'll get about David right there. Right, 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 right. Okay, so two more. I'll bring you chicken soup, so, buddy. Two, so, Can you name two? He's so saying better. two. Yeah, name two, name two current New York men. I don't know them. I'm serious. Because <laughs> right they've been... They've been horrible. He's since a huge, days. huge Met fan. Can't name. And by the way, he wouldn't name Dave David Wright either. I'm not saying currently I am. I just it's out of loyal. All right, name two Mets. Name five all-time Mets. Uh, okay, that's it. Uh, hold on. Well, that's easy. Oh, it is. You sure? I mean, yes, yeah, it when is. When he was a kid, he. he... Yes, uh, Tommy Agee, Cleon Jones, okay. uh, yeah, Tom yeah, Sheba. Yeah. 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 So, literally, 69 Mets. I know. Time you watch <laughs> uh, Duffy, uh, Dyer Duffy, who else? Uh, Dyer Duffy. <laughs> now, John, yeah, exactly, also, Casey. Wrote, uh, uh, Willie Mays played his last Dyer year in the early 70s. Yeah. Dyer Duffy, he said. Who would you just say? Mays played in 73, his last year of professional baseball. Whatever. Okay, here's Mike's an all-New York player, Mike. frozen. Came from the Yankees. Curtis... Oh, wait, when, when was this? Dad? Plays on the Mets now. No way. Curtis. I mean, he'll never get it. He'll never get it. He doesn't know. No, I don't. I'm sorry. Play the Yankees in the Mets. No, he All star. He, he doesn't know who he is. No. Curtis Granders. Uh, all right, we're going to uh, we're gonna go, uh, Casey. I'm going to let you get some rest, buddy. Good job. Yeah, thanks. All right, boys. Always a pleasure. Get, get some rest and good luck with the baby, man. Keep us informed. I will do. Will all right. Do. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Take care, See brother. Ya. Fantasy baseball fans on opening day, DraftKings.com awarded over half a million bucks in cash prizes. Half a million bucks day one. That's right. You got to check out DraftKings.com, America's favorite one-day fantasy sports site. Our listeners are won hundreds, thousands, even a million bucks. DraftKings is their favorite sport fantasy game. A game. A guy named Sam won 100 grand. Seriously, 100 grand day one. DraftKings is one-day fantasy sports. Right now, you can play for free to win real cash. Enter Artie, A-R-T-I-E, today at DraftKings.com and get free entry into another huge contest. They're awarding over 400 grand in cash prizes. Now, Mike, for 400 grand, would you let someone make love to, you, oh, to your no. face? Too, too cheap. How much? What's the minimum? What the minimum we said it at before was 100 million. 50 million? Don't forget no. 50 million? No, no. Oh, that, whatever. <laughs> for, Mike, I would, I would do it for a grand a week if I were you. <laughs> 400 grand. Free spots are going quick, so enter Artie, A-R-T-I-E now, DraftKings.com, DraftKings. Dot com back in the The Artie Lang Show, weeknights on audience, only on DirecTV.